What's going on everyone? Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host Neil Pachigar and you're watching the second episode of It's Not That Complicated. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, I highly recommend you do that because every week we talk about an interesting topic and make it simple for you to understand so that you can feel inspired and start doing something today. Now tell me something. Have you ever been in a situation where you're having a conversation with someone and that person is just not listening? They are either too distracted or they are uninterested in what we are speaking. I get super disappointed when that happens to me. Well, it turns out there is a secret sauce to make our conversations more engaging and interesting. And that is incorporating stories in our conversations. Learning the art of storytelling. Stories are so powerful that it forces the other person to start imagining, start thinking, anticipate the words that are coming out of our mouth and I promise they will give you their undivided attention. You might be going for a date or you're talking to a co-worker. You might be giving a presentation or you are striking a conversation with someone at Starbucks. If you start incorporating stories in your conversations, not only is it going to set you apart from the rest of the crowd, but it will make you and your conversations more memorable. Today, I'm in conversation with Neil Bearden, who's a psychologist himself. And we'll be talking about learning the art of storytelling and incorporating it in our conversation. Neil, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I am extremely honored and excited, mainly for two reasons. One is you are my first guest who is an international guest. I have not had any international guests. So you're currently in Singapore, I am in uh, California and we are making it happen across the borders. So that and secondly, I'm just so excited to be talking about a topic that is so near and dear to me and probably you. That is the art of storytelling. So when I saw your bicycle video, uh, the story for bicycle, I was like, I have to talk to Neil. I have to just sit down with you and get to know all the nitty gritty details. So thank you so much. It's such an honor. Cheers. Thank you very much. Yes, absolutely. So uh, let me, if I got this right, you have done your PhD in psychology then you did your postdoc in neuroscience and after that you are a professor at INSEAD business school where you're teaching um, where you taught the art of dis decision making and now you have founded and CEO of your company Plotwolf where you are helping entrepreneurs and product developers out there to form a story for your products. Yep, that's a big part of it. That is awesome. And uh, so I, sometimes I feel uh, in this middle of the interview, I'll, your psychology skills will be so strong that you will get in my brain. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know, you'll figure something out about me. But you have issues, man. I, oh, my God, that's too early, man. <laughs> uh, but but I think uh, the topic of storytelling, um, many people, I feel, use this term storyteller. Uh, and it is probably fashionable for them. I think if I see a LinkedIn profile or something, many many people just put that thing storyteller, but uh, I'm not sure if we get that term, if we understand it fully. So uh, I think one thing which I wanted to start us off with is, can you explain like the concept of storytelling and why is it so important? Like uh, some say it is a form of communication. Some say it is a conversation starter. Uh, so what is your understanding for storytelling? I, I have no idea, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really don't, man. I don't have the Oxford English Dictionary definition of exactly what it is. I can tell you what it means for me. Okay. And it's simply describing a series of events and what happens in a series of events, something happens so that when your audience hears it, they see what happens. And generally, right. the stories that people find interesting 
are stories in which the events involve something happening to someone. Mm. So that's it. Something needs to happen. In contrast to what I hear a lot is characterized as stories, which I call, um, in my jargon, it's the SLS. Mm -hmm. I'll give you the polite version of it because I, I don't want you to have to beep out too much stuff. Okay. <laughs> so the, the polite version is the crappy little speech. Uh -huh. And some folks characterize the crappy little speech as a story. Go and ahead. usually that's just when they say, I'm passionate about ice cream and I want to change the world. And they, they give these speeches. Yeah. But it's not a story unless something happens, hmm. generally to someone, though that's not an absolute requirement. Mm -hmm. There needs to be some change. And critically, your audience needs to see it. Got it. So I was walking home today and a dog ran after me. I stopped, I froze, I put my arms up, and then he started licking my shoe. Hmm. I brought him home and I fed him some ice cream. Now, that's a horrible story, but that's a story because something happened, right? Hmm. You can see it. Hmm. I'm walking, a dog came, I brought him home, we ate ice cream. Even though it's horrible, hmm. even though no one will remember that because it's terrible, something happened and you saw it. That's storytelling. Hmm. Here's non-story. I'm very passionate about animals who don't have owners and who are lost. And I believe that it's very important that we take care of them. Hmm. Okay. I don't even know what that was, but that wasn't a story. Yeah. In a story, there's going to be a red dog with, he had a blue seven pointed on him. Hmm. I don't know why he had someone spray painted a seven on the dog, hmm. but I was walking home and first I gave him some strawberry ice cream. He turned away from it. As soon as I put down the chocolate, he went nuts. He started doing backspins like he was breakdancing. Hmm. Okay. So when I say that, I'm just saying random garbage, but I'm doing it deliberately with intent so that you quite literally see what I'm saying. And hmm. in storytelling, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get your audience to see what you're saying and something needs to happen. That's what I mean by it. Beautiful. I don't know what everyone else on LinkedIn means by it. <laughs> everyone has it in their header. Yeah. I don't know what it means. No, beautiful. And uh, I think one thing that you beautifully did out there is you forced me into imagining the words that you're speaking out of your mouth. So when you told the story of your dog and licking and then having ice cream, I'm actually imagining you in that situation. And believe it or not, I mean, you have my attention, like you have my focus because now I'm building the story in my mind. Yep, that's it. So that technique, if we want to geek on, is called the transfer of imagery. And what I teach people to do is you deliberately transfer imagery. Love Why it. do you do that? Because when you do that, you give people a mental movie. Now, look, you probably have a subscription to HBO, Netflix, Disney, who knows what you got subscriptions mm -hmm. to. And why do you keep paying for all that? You keep paying for all that because you like story. In mm -hmm. particular, you like visual content. So if you can communicate, if you can transfer imagery so that your audience is saying that, they're going to lean in. They're going to listen to you. Okay. So everything I was telling you, I was just freestyling about some dog and some ice cream yeah. BS. I was just making it up, but it was visual. And when people experience someone speaking in a way that evokes images in their mind, they lean in, they don't blink, they pay attention in contrast to, yeah. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate you. You know, storytelling is very important because storytelling, uh, it influences dopamine and the brain and, <laughs> and it really allows people to connect. Right. I can say all of that. And right. You're just, it's causing you to tune out as soon mm. as I start doing that. Yeah. That's impossible to listen to. That's the crappy little speech, right? Just saying all of that, nothing in it is particularly visual. Whereas if I say, you know, I was walking home the, and when we passed a guy smoking a cigar, there's a guy going by in a wheelchair, smoking a cigar, mm -hmm. wearing a Panama hat. And next thing I knew, somehow he was ahead of me when I got home. I couldn't figure out how he got ahead of me. Mm. And I saw actually that the guy was standing there stretching. He had parked his wheelchair and he was stretching like he was about to go for a job. His hat was sitting there. His, sar his cigar was still burning. He'd set it just on the planter next to his wheelchair. And I still haven't made sense of it, right? I'm just making up complete nonsense, but hopefully you can see it. Yeah. And even though it's random and it's garbage, it gets your attention. Absolutely. That's storytelling. Lovely, lovely. So uh, I think I, I completely understood um, like the transfer of imagery concept, like not that I'm building it and stuff like that. And I know you mentioned a little bit about uh, that uh, there's this dopamine and oxytocin ah. and stuff that, that goes on. But if I, if I have to, um, and probably to geek out a little bit more on you. So it, 
I want to understand why is storytelling so impactful and powerful? Like uh, sometimes just right now when you were speaking, it was so captivating, like you had me hooked. So uh, from psychology standpoint, um, what exactly is going on in our brains when a story formation is going on? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> I, I really don't. And, but, I, but I will tell you something. And this is just my own view. And that's yeah. all I can give you, obviously, is my own view. But if anyone tries to convince you that storytelling is important by referring to neurotransmitters, mm. ask yourself, like, re really, what's, what's the relevance of that? Like, if I say that it involves, evokes dopamine, what's the pragmatic value of that? So if you hear someone talk about dopamine and storytelling in the same sentence, it's BS. Yeah. Don't oh. trust the person. Okay. That's what, that's what, that's the kind of stuff people say to get credibility. Okay. So if I can't demonstrate that I have some storytelling acumen, if I can't get you to lean in and not blink, what do I do? I try to refer to some garbage science that I never read. And I start talking about dopamine and oxytocin mm -hmm. and all of that. And for some reason, it's a mystery to me. People listen to that. People repeat it. But, it, but my question is, what's the pragmatic value of knowing that? What's the pragmatic value of knowing something about dopamine? Nothing. I'll give you a better test. If you want to know, does storytelling work? Now you ask why it works. I don't know why it works, hmm. but we know it works. And that's all hmm. we need to know. Hmm. But if you want to ask, how do you know if it's working, right? You're not going to stick some probe in my brain to see if there's excess dopamine, right? Mm -hmm. I hope not. Hmm. But what you can do, what anyone can do, anyone listening, watching right now, is you can do the eye blink test. Okay. Okay, you're communicating, and it doesn't need to be a story. It can be any communication. You're on Zoom, you're in a meeting, you're on a date, anywhere. You can use the eye blink test. What's the eye blink test? If when you're communicating, if the person on the other side is doing this, it's working. Hmm. If they're doing this, looking at their WhatsApp, checking that all out, it ain't working. Hmm. Okay, so forget about dopamine. Just restrict yourself to the eye blink test. And your objective anytime you should communicate or anytime you're communicating should be that people do not blink. That's what you need to worry about. Forget about dopamine. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> when, when, you, when, when you were speaking, I don't think I blinked my eyes. You better not, man. I was looking at you. <laughs> no, this is lovely. And uh, I think um, one more thing. So one aspect is the story part, right? That is, uh, okay, this transfer of imagery and we are thinking a lot of things in our mind. Uh, uh, other thing that I think beautifully you did was uh, there's some some level of twist that you are adding in the story. And I think that is a skill that we learn over time. Like when you told me there was a guy uh, smoking a cigar, then suddenly he went ahead of you. Now I was, I'm, I was curious. I was like, wait, what happened? What happened next? Like, you know, and I think those things maybe like you know, they connect the dots. And maybe that was the reason I was so focused while you were speaking at it. Something needs to happen. And often if it has surprise in it, it engages the audience, right? Every Hollywood movie you see, right? They yes. mastered this. Something happens. There's suspense. You find out why there's causality linking that change that you see. Lovely. This is awesome. Awesome. And I like how you are uh, narrowed it down to just that blink test because we, literally, I mean, I think people are talking of this dopamine and oxytocin, <laughs> including, including <laughs> myself. Including I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> you sent me these notes. I saw it. I said, "Oh no, man!" <laughs> I'm just gonna tell it to him straight. <laughs> no, this is this is awesome because I needed to hear that. Uh, but and, just, and let me just let me just reinforce that point, just so everyone's clear. Yes. What is the pragmatic value of someone telling you that storytelling does something with dopamine? Hmm. Right. It, when you find out that information, what are you gonna do with it? Hmm. Nothing. 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 Yeah. There's nothing you can do with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lovely. Okay. Lovely. Sorry to cut you off. <laughs> no, this is, no, this is awesome. And I, I think that uh, emphasis was important because sometimes people are, uh, it is good to know the why. It is good to understand the nerdy aspects of it, but also understand the simple things that you can see with your visible eye. And that that is what is important. So uh, I think the hottest hot question of this episode, which I think everyone would be eager to hear and listen is, uh, how can one develop this knack of storytelling? And I, I'll give you an example, right? So for example, we are having conversations, 
we are going on dates, we are talking to our office colleagues, we are doing presentations, I'm talking to you right now, and there are just zillions and millions of conversations that we keep doing day in, day out. So if we have to implement something in our day-to-day -day lives, uh, do you have some sort of like um, framework or a guide that one can learn? Yep. The, the most fundamental thing we've already covered is the transfer of imagery. That's what mm. you should be doing just regularly. Mm -hmm. Go to Starbucks, go back to the office. At Starbucks, something will happen. Perhaps it will be trivial. Perhaps it will not be interesting whatsoever. Maybe you left your hat at Starbucks. Mm. Go back, explain to your colleagues, turn that into a story. Now, what do I mean by story? Just simply transfer imagery. Mm. I went to Starbucks. Yeah, the, the barista was the one with the blue hair. You know, the one with the blue hair. Mm. She wears those pink toms, the, the ones with the little elephants on them. Mm. Yeah, her. I didn't, didn't you hit on her one time? Do you have her number? <laughs> because I think I left my hat there and I know I'm not going to get through if I call that phone at Starbucks, but maybe if you could WhatsApp her, the girl with the blue hair, with the pink shoes, with the elephants on it, mm. maybe you can find out if I left my MAGA hat there. Mm. <laughs> okay, so, so what you do is you just practice. You just, you take something that's real. And when you are describing what it is that you want to your colleague, you make the girl with the blue hair, with the pink toms, with the elephants on it, visual and you just keep practicing and you keep mm. practicing and you keep practicing and the first thing you should do is liberate yourself from the notion that you need to have some polished highly structured hollywood story mm. before you can start communicating mm. forget forget stories just practice transferring imagery just all the time just mm. always try to make whatever it is that you're saying visual mm. Mm. that's the best thing that you can do the second thing that you should do and you do this in concert with the first thing is, where is it? Film yourself. If, okay. if you actually want to get good, everyone I work with, I work with a whole bunch of people, all of them film themselves. Okay. At least, at least the ones who take it seriously, the, the rest I fire, but the ones who take it seriously, they film themselves. Okay. Okay. So if, if you're on Zoom calls and everyone is WhatsApping and through halfway through your presentation, you see everyone is checked out. You need to work on that. Mm -hmm. What's one way to work on that? Film yourself. And then it, it'll be a real wake up call the first time you do it. Because the first time you do it, you'll probably realize that your story or whatever it is that you practice probably look like this. Uh, I have a story to tell. I, I, I think it's pretty interesting. <laughs> you know, I, it's, it's amazing what happened. And, uh, you know, I think it's pretty good. And, you know, this one time I was, uh, you know, I really like bite and, and you'll find yeah, that yeah. you were incredibly unengaging. Totally. That's what most people will find. It's a wake up call when you do that. Mm -hmm. And then you do it and you say, okay, that was terrible. That was horrible. Now I have incentives to improve. Okay. Mm -hmm. What can I do first? Cut out all that junk. What should you do? What's another thing you can do if you want to improve your communication? Elmore Leonard said this, leave out all the parts that people skip. Hmm. Okay. So imagine, let, let's just, let's just restart this. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, I, I really, I'm really glad to be here. You know, storytelling is, is really important. Mm -hmm. I'm Neil. Uh, I'm an American living it. Like who wants to hear that? No one wants to hear that. No one. We want to hear about the bacon that I saw on the sidewalk <laughs> and the vultures that were flying around yeah. when the guy was driving by in the cement truck. Right. No one wants to hear that. Uh, so yeah. just practice transfer of imagery, mm -hmm. film yourself regularly, and just keep doing that over and over and Got leave it. out all the parts that people skip. Be honest with yourself. Okay. It's just that simple. And, th and then also you can sign up for my programs. That's And we are going to come on that too. So uh, I, I like I liked how um, you told... Um, so th there are two things which I think were very captivating for me. One is that leave out the crap right uh not people let's be honest to ourselves people are not interested uh and second is uh film yourself and just see how you are doing for yourself so i for the second point i have a question is that how much does a personality play a role in there like what if someone is an introverted personality versus an extroverted someone is just naturally good at speaking someone they sweat uh when they start speaking in public so uh is is there uh have you have you come across uh, your um, students or someone who has been in this situation? The whole spectrum. And, okay. and the, the advice I give, the advice I'll give now is 
none of that really matters. The, okay. What matters is that you transfer imagery, you commit to the message that you're delivering and you just do it your way. You're not, it, because it, as soon as, if, if you're introverted sweating and you try to pretend like, hey everyone, you know, thank you very much for listening. You try to pretend like you're something besides what you are. Mm. It's gonna be phony. It's gonna look like acting, mm. okay? And, and, and when, it, when it looks like acting, you know what that means? It means it's bad. Yeah. It means it's terrible. Yeah. And so if, if you're just a complete introverted deer in headlights sweating, but you can tell your story truthfully and you can transfer imagery about the bacon on the sidewalk and the vultures going overhead, people don't <laughs> care if you look like Brad Pitt, if you're waving your arms around like you're Italian, no yeah. one cares. Just be yourself. Don't be truthful. Don't worry about any of that. I saw a post, you know, black swan guy, Talib. Mm -hmm. I saw this one Twitter post. It stands out in my mind when this topic comes up. Someone said to him, right? Talib is incredibly abrasive, obnoxious. I think he's a very clever guy, but he would admit that he's obnoxious. Mm. Someone said, you know, you might be more effective if you changed your style, saying implication being if you were less obnoxious, angry, direct. Mm. And he said, first of all, he said, F you. Mm. Then he said, never lecture anyone. I think he said, never lecture someone on his or her style. I think mm. that's the exact quote. Lovely. That's true. Lovely. Okay, so there, there's a substance of what you're saying and then there's how you're saying it and how you say it is your style. And Beautiful. if you're introverted and sweating and a geek and you haven't been in the sunshine in eight years and you drink gallons of Red Bull each day and you can't look someone in the eye when you're talking to them, it doesn't matter. Mm. What you can do is you can just find the message you wanna say and tell it truthfully and don't worry about what other folks think about the style because if the imagery is there the gallon of Red Bull, you look like a vampire, you haven't been in the sun in six years, and people start getting images, they're gonna lean in, you're gonna pass on the blink test with them, yeah, yeah. and no one will care about any of that stuff. Don't act, don't be phony. Lovely, lovely, I think that- let, let, me, let me just illustrate it. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, and I was walking home today after I dropped my daughter off from school, <laughs> and, and this dog ran up to me, right? So it was this dog and it was this really big, like that, that's, that's no. horrible. That's phony, right? Exactly. As soon as yeah. it just collapses then and you feel like there's something wrong. This guy's full of crap. It doesn't yeah. work. So just be yourself. Don't worry about style. Don't let anyone lecture you on style. Be yeah. you, be truthful, transfer imagery, practice, film yourself. You're going to see that you're terrible. You're going to have incentive to improve and just keep working on it because you can get better. Beautiful. Actually. Beautiful. Lovely. I think, I mean, you just summed it up in the absolutely perfectly and uh, I, I think the key word uh, that I took from that entire learning was authenticity how how important is it to be uh, authentic whoever it is be it your date be it your professor be it anyone don't don't put up a face that you are not and that is um, extremely intriguing like it's thought-provoking so uh, now switching uh, gears a little bit, I wanted to know, um, so I know storytelling like you know, itself has been a very important topic, but I don't see it being like say, and I have to be honest, I don't see it being taught in like schools or colleges or university I went through or even like our uh, corporate program, right? So uh, do you think that there are like legit careers in uh, storytelling or as a storyteller? I, I think a lot of careers are storytelling. I mean, look at what, what is your job as the CEO of Apple? It's not worrying about operational minutia. Yeah. Basically you, you go out, you deal with investors and you tell stories. Got it. If, if you're in sales, right? I work with a bunch of people in sales. What is it about stories Story. now? Let's, let's be clear for the, any cynic listening. They'll, they'll definitely, you know, if anyone watches this with some non-zero probability, some of them will be cynics. Mm. <laughs> Here's the thing. Storytelling is not BS. It's not, oh, let me, let me pull some trick on you. Mm. Storytelling mm. is, here's my product, or let's talk about storytelling for startup founders. I work a lot with startup founders. Yeah. Storytelling is incredibly important. And storytelling is not you know, spend some BS instead of having substance and good product. Storytelling is, I have substance, I have good product. Now let me show you hmm. why it's good. Yeah. Because 
you you know why it's good. You've been working on this. You you dreamed it up. Hmm. I never heard of it before. I don't know if it's good. Now, how can you get me to understand that it's good that I should write a check to you? Hmm. Well, one simple technique you can use is, okay, let me paint a picture right now of what your life looks like or what one of your users' life looks like before. And let me show you that same user, perhaps you, what your life is going to look like after my technology, after my service. Yeah, yeah. Not tell you, but show you. This mm. is what your life looks like right now. This is what it looks like after. And the bigger that delta, the bigger the opportunity I see as an investor, mm. for instance. Mm. Okay, so show me. Here's an example. I use this example all the time. Two investors go to a VC. Or sorry, two startup founders go to a VC. And the first one goes in, and this is 150 years ago. The first one goes in, he says, sir, investors, the VC's name, Ed Bailey. Sir, Mr. Bailey, I have developed a technology that allows the transmission of audio signals across wire. We -hmm. believe that this is revolutionary. The total addressable market we've estimated to be $150 million. Okay, it's 150 years ago, so that's a big big amount. Yeah, okay, yeah. translate. And okay, okay, Ed Bailey listens, leaves. Second founder comes in and says, Mr. Bailey, I have developed a technology that allows the transmission of audio signals across wires. Now, what does that mean? I was just talking to your assistant outside. I know that that picture right there on your desk is of your granddaughter, Mabel. Mm. Sir, I have developed a technology that's gonna allow Mabel to be able to call you on your birthday. She will be able to speak into a cup in California and you will be able to put your ear up next to a cup here in New Jersey and you'll be able to hear Mabel sing you happy birthday on your birthday. <laughs> Sir, right now on your birthday, you get this little index card that says, happy birthday, grandpa, love Mabel. Okay, now that's great. And she sent that for about a dollar a character from California over the telegraph wire. Yeah. But sir, with this technology, Mabel will be able to call you and you will be able to hear her sing happy birthday to you on your birthday. Now, both founders are describing the same technology, the yeah. telephone. But in one case, the transmission of audio signals across a wire, give me a break. Yeah. Sir, Mabel is going to be able to call you on your birthday and sing happy birthday. Know your audience, right? Mm -hmm. if, you know, if you know grandparents, what matters to grandparents absolutely more than anything else? Grandchildren. Yeah. So you take your technology and you show him, sir, your life right now is you get a little card. You, you were happy with that. Happy birthday, grandpa, on yeah. a little index <laughs> card. Looks like you're studying for you know, the GRE. And in the new world, with my technology, you're going to be able to hear Mabel's voice on your birthday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is he going to be interested? It's emotional. It's real. He can imagine it. He gets it. Totally. So founders need to be storytellers. Anyone doing sales needs to be a storyteller. CEOs, if you want to get a date, it helps you be a storyteller. Yeah. So a big chunk of those are monetizing it. So they're already doing it. Totally. Is there a career where you can just put storyteller on your LinkedIn profile and that's all you do. I don't know. I don't know if I would encourage anyone to do that, but what, what you should do is just, just become a better communicator. Mm. Realize that storytelling is a very good medium for doing communication, yeah. work on it, refine it, apply it to whatever it is that you're doing. Lovely. Lovely. When you told that VC story, I got emotional. I was like, here, here is a check right now. Just do, give me the goddamn technology right now. That is that is just extremely. Like, I'm an awestruck to be honest. Uh, I know I know you mentioned uh, Plotwolf. Uh, can you can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what Plotwolf is and uh, what is what is your mission with that company and what are you trying to achieve? Uh, I don't know actually. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love how you start your answers. That I don't know. <laughs> I, I know, you know I, a lot about it. <laughs> I, I know I know a broad direction, but I I don't know what final form it will take. Okay. Right now, what I do is I I coach people on sales. I coach mm -hmm. founders who are doing fundraising. I work with people who just want to generally improve their storytelling. That's what I do right now in a kind of hodgepodge of ways. Mm -hmm. Where I would like it to go, at least a big part of it, is one thing that I do right now. I started mastermind groups, so I have. Mm -hmm. I have now several mastermind groups because I try to keep them small. Yeah. And 
what happens in these groups, two things. We work together to get people to develop their storytelling. That, that's what we do in the group. Mm. One thing that happens in there is when you work together and you hear people's stories, their Osiris stories, their origin stories, their Mr. Williams at Broadmoor Middle stories, yeah. and then they share theirs with you, an amazing thing happens, real actual nice. connection. Yeah. So part of that is developing storytelling. Another part is, you know, I'll, I'll develop a group that's a group of startup founders who are going mm. through the same kind of journey together. Mm. They can all work on storytelling. They can also create meaningful relationships with other people they can call. I mean, really meaningful, enduring, when you come through town, you can sleep on my sofa kind of relationships. Nice. So that, that, that's the plan right now is, I don't wanna call it social networking, but it's gonna have some elements of what LinkedIn should be. Sure. So on LinkedIn, how do I establish a connection with you right now? I hit that little thumb on your yeah. post. Yeah. Well, what, hap what happens in Plotwolf in these groups is we share stories, the group, we meet here like this. We have a WhatsApp group. People dump in their videos, right? Remember the videos? Remember how mm -hmm, you learn? Mm -hmm. People yeah, dump yeah. in their videos to the WhatsApp group for that, for that particular group. They share, these relationships emerge. If I can find a way to, to scale that and build that, I would love to do it. So that's what I'm working on. Is that Excellent. feasible? I don't know. I got to find a bunch of people who know how to help other people communicate in a visual way and all this other stuff. So right now I'm trying to cultivate talent. So I don't know where it's going, but that's a big part of what I'm trying to do. Excellent. And I, I mean, I, I I have full faith in you. I think the 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 picture that you just drew for me, uh, I, I, can, I can clearly see uh, what you want to achieve. And I, I think uh, once we understand that part, uh, then things will just fall in place, I'm for sure. So coming to the last segment of this uh, show, Neil, uh, this show is called It's Not That Complicated. And the idea is basically to take such vague, uh, complex topics out there and making it simple for people to understand and start acting on it today. So if I have to ask you, uh, what are some three CTAs, some three call to actions that you would recommend to people if they want to learn and get better at the art of storytelling in their day to day lives? What would it be? First, so what, what's the big reluctance that people have? So uh, the main answer to your question, I think, is just overcoming reluctance. What's mm. the big reluctance people have? I will do it and it won't be good. Mm. Mm. I will do it. I don't know how to do it. Let me order a book on Amazon and when it comes, I'll read it. And then after I read it, then maybe I'll start doing it. And people procrastinate. You know, what's the cost of doing it and it not working? There is no cost. Mm -hmm. So what's the best advice I can give you, right? You're in Silicon Valley right now. This is the best advice. I even have this domain because I'm turning into a program. Start up the story. Mm -hmm. Okay. Start up the story.com. Go there. There's nothing there. Actually, don't go there, but I have the <laughs> domain. So treat your storytelling like a startup. What does that mean? Just get an MVP. You have some idea that you want to communicate. You want to make it story ish, whatever that means. Just take it MVP and startup language. In storytelling world, it's called the crappy first draft or the SFD, but I'll, I'll be polite. Just, just create a first draft, whatever it is, and then test it. How do you test it? I already told you how to test it. You go out, you tell it to people, okay? And then you just see how you're doing on the blink test. Mm -hmm. If everyone's looking around while you're doing twitching, like a meth head, then probably it's not working so well. But if people are leaning in, they're not blinking, then maybe it's working well. Another test you can do, you know, even before you go to market like that, is you just film yourself doing it. And then you just realize, you know, what does it matter if I suck? Well, it doesn't matter because you already suck at communication. That's why you're worried about improving your storytelling. So actually there's no cost whatsoever. So the, the first thing, and it's the only thing, is just actually start doing it. Just start doing mm -hmm. it. And I've told you almost everything you need to know already about starting to do it. You don't need to wait on that book on Amazon. Mm. It's going to be 300 pages, some dude talking about dopamine. It's not going to help you. It's just procrastination. That's just resistance discouraging you from starting actually doing it. What do you need to do? Remember the girl with the blue hair at Starbucks with the pink toms with the elephants on them. You just start deliberately trying to transfer imagery, film yourself and just do it. It's just that simple, young people. That's it. Beautiful. 
beautiful it's not that complicated <laughs> it's not <laughs> thank you so much neil i think i have enjoyed i have never been so intrigued with any conversation in a 30 to 45 minute conversation and i had an absolute pleasure talking to you and i just learned so much myself from you so i really appreciate you coming on the show today thanks brother i enjoyed it i have decided i'm going to take that eye blink test i'm not going to blink till you press that subscribe button so please subscribe guys my eyes are really watering please subscribe please